Well, it's nice to have you all here today, and it's wonderful to see all the kids here. Um, I am uh, thrilled that our kids love video games, and I would love even more if they loved being outside as well. So uh, it speaks to our uh, cultural shift that, is, uh, that has been happening, and today, in fact, we're, we're going to touch on that for all of us as well. We're all plugged in a little too much. Do we have an agreement on that? Yeah, and we'll say to the kids, you know, you need to get off your device as we're like, you know, like this. You know, we're, we're cooking and texting and uh, emailing and then going to the next room to watch something on YouTube, you know, which is great as long as you're watching CCU. But anyway, <laughs> it's fun. So we are in, uh, in a series called Dream Big Spiritual Goal, Goal Setting, and uh, I'm I'm thrilled to be bringing it to you, and, and I want to just give you the weeks uh, as, a, as a reminder of where we've been and, and where we're going. Week one, we talked about the, the dream, and the dream or the vision is about what grand thing is God wanting to do in and through my life, in and through as me. Not what do I want, but what is God, what is God desiring to do in and through me as, as my life. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done there, and it's a long process that many of us have been on for some time. Uh, some people have been working on it since last year. I've been working on it for years and continue to. And it speaks to what is our purpose? What are we here to do? What are we here to do and be? Again, not what can I get, but what am I here to do and be? Because when we're on purpose, the getting happens uh, pretty effortlessly. So we don't have to force that. And then week two was about um, the goal. And it was about, okay, what are the things then... If this is my grand dream, what are some of those things I need to move forward and do? What are the steps I need to take? What are some of the short-term uh, things I need to set for myself? And then maybe even what are the long-term uh, things I need to do? And then what are the steps towards that? And if you're in class, you know that we have even been um, uh, resisting putting too many uh, specific, uh, specifics down. I myself specifically have been, specifically on the specifics. And uh, I've been unspecifically specific. That's what it is. And, and it's like I'm, I'm, I'm doing my goals first from a feeling tone. What do I want this area of my life to feel like? Because we know that emotion is very attached to manifestation. And we don't want to just, again, it's easy to go just to the mind. But when we get into the feeling tone, we're accessing the soul. And our emotions, our feelings, those are windows into the soul. So I've really learned to, to, back up, to back off sometimes making lists. And what is the feeling tone that I want? So if you haven't thought about that yet, I want to encourage you to. And we were talking about, you know, the different areas of relationship, of career, of, um, of uh, help me, um, oh, body, the main one I'm working on. <laughs> okay, and, um, and then fourth, we even said soul, right? So we talk about soul here all the time, and so what, also what we said is for you, soul may need to be number one on your list. It's always number one on my list, so I moved it down to focus on some other areas. So um, be thinking about that. You know, what is the feeling tone you want in these different areas of your life? And then, and then one of the practices, uh, you know, we've been doing is, uh, well, week three, which is today, is called the practice. And I've been journaling, and if you're in class, you know there's three different journals we're doing. I'm doing, uh, this is my feeling journal, where every single day I write down every single morning how I feel. And we do this so that we're seeing if there's any trend in what's going on in my life. How am I feeling? Remembering emotions are windows into the soul. What am I feeling on a consistent basis? If I'm feeling depressed and sad and angry, something needs to shift. Amen? Right? If I'm feeling happy and fulfilled, well, then that's also good information, isn't it? So I can't know where I'm going if I don't know where I am, so I'm going to do internal work about that. And, and uh, it was really wonderful the other day. I had the best feeling check-in ever, and it was three words. I feel happy, exclamation point. Praise God. Because just a few days before, that was not it. 
The other thing we're doing in another journal is we're writing down, what is my task from the universe? I'm going to take dictation. I'm going to take direction and instruction. Every single morning, I'm going to say, universe, what is mine to do? And then I'm going to do it. And we call that the big three. Remember the big three? What are my big three things I'm going to do today? One, two, three. And then I'm going to do them. Remember, action is key to moving your dream forward, we said last week. And then the last journal we're working with is our dream journal, where we just dream every single day about what's possible. We sit with our dream, and then from there we get to the goals and and the practices and things. So that's some of the work we've been doing. And today, the practice, we're going to talk about what that really means. So what does it mean to have a practice? Well, these are the daily habits that support your dreams and goals. Because you have daily habits right now that may or may not be supporting your dreams and goals may or may not be and so we want to become conscious about that we want to notice that and and we want to notice it in the activities we're doing even the energies we associate with that's very very important what are the energies we're aligning with what are the practices that we're doing and so I gave you a few examples there of some of the things that are important practices for me and uh, bless you I love when somebody sneezes in church. Usually there's four or five, you know, just bless, bless you, bless you, bless you. <laughs> Exercise might be one for you. Sleep might be a practice for you. Prayer and meditation, you know, we have to put that one up there. One of the things that really, really matters to me is support from my friends. You know, I give out so much support, and I bet you all do too. We have a lot of people in this community that are big givers, you give financially to people, you give your time to people, you give your love, you give your hugs, you give your commitment. So sometimes you need support as well, right? So that's okay to know that. As a matter of fact, when you know that and you receive the support that you need, it's easier for you to give it away again, isn't it? So that's what we want to do is become conscious about what are the things that do really support me so that then when I am giving my gifts to the world, I can do that with a lot of ease, with a lot of love and with a lot of grace rather than resentment and anger. See, if we're not getting what we need, when we go to give our gifts in the world, some of the things come out sideways. We don't mean for them to, but it happens sometimes. So we want to make sure we're getting supported, realizing when we're supported, we're much better supporting others. What do they say on the plane when the oxygen mask? What do you do? Your mask first. Can't help anybody else if you're not, right? So you got to help yourself first very important. And one of my favorite things to do, one of my uh, practices that supports me is walking my dog every day. Oh, I feel so good every morning when I do that. Okay, time to go get the thing. It's a wonderful ritual. It's a wonderful ritual. The other day, I was walking my dog, and he had just, you know, done his business. And I'm, you know, being responsible owner, and I start to pick it up, and one of the members goes by, hey! <laughs> I don't know, this is strange. I'd never had that before. <laughs> the other thing, getting outside every single day, spend time outside every day. Find a reason to go outside with your kids. Find a reason, look for something, make up a treasure hunt um, with a prize at the end. Get them outside. Get, them, get their feet on the ground and in the grass. It's so, so important to get your, your little ones outside. And very important for you. Remember, we did a whole Sunday on that, on the energy that you receive from the earth itself. So very, very important to, to ground yourself uh, to be outside every day. And for me, critical. I, you just don't want to be around me when I hadn't been outside. And then laughing. Oh my gosh, kids laugh so easily, don't they? At anything. I remember, I remember when um, my son was about maybe a year and a half and I cried about something and he was like, <laughs> your face looks funny. And I was like, oh, you know, I was like, I know, sweetie, it looks funny. <laughs> Every, everything was new, you know. It's like, that's funny. I've never seen mama's face do that before. I'm not suggesting you do that. <laughs> but, but I just, the ease at which he, he could laugh, you know, and kids laugh. And then making time to play. Making time to play. That's really, really fun. And it might be a video game with your kiddo. Uh, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun uh, when it matters to them. That's a lot of fun to do together. You do want to know what they're playing, too. 
uh, friends. You do really want to know that. Okay, so those are some examples. What have I not mentioned that are things that support you, your practices? What are they? Work. What's that? Work. Work is a practice that supports you. Good. What else? Cooking. Cooking, yes. What else? Yes. Any type of art, music, yes. Art is a great expression. Not being busy. Not being busy. Time doing nothing. That for a while, that was actually, I wrote that down. Time doing nothing. And my accountability would, partner would say, how is that going? <laughs> yes, good. Loving on my animals. Oh, loving on your animals, yes, yes. Oh, that, that's the best. Yes, what else, Sarah? Accepting the way you feel. Accepting the way you feel? Yes, excellent. What it, interacting, with interacting with friends, good. Positive, Positive affirmations, yes, you are ahead. That's next week, yes. <laughs> good man, good man, that's right. <laughs> yes, yes, feeding your little feral cat family outside, right? Those are great things to do. Why? Because you feel good doing them, right? So it's a lot easier to be in alignment with the universe when you're happy, when you feel good. You want to do, you want to give, you want to be on purpose when you feel happy. And so if we're not, it may be adjustment time. And again, that's what some of the practices are for, to bring us back into alignment with what it is we are to be doing. And sometimes those shifts take planning. Sometimes those shifts are difficult. But I can assure you, you have the support of the universe. Will you say with me, the universe supports me 100% together? The universe supports me 100%. That means you don't have to wait. The universe really does support you already. But the universe cannot do for you. You have to do for yourself. Right? You have to do for yourself. So let's look at the next slide. I want to talk a little bit about what we do. We get in our own way. And, of course, we call this self-sabotage, right? I put here so you would see it. The ego has a wonderful time with this one and really tries to convince us we are not worth it. And there's thoughts that we have, and we all have them. They're normal, egoic thoughts. Here's one of the classics. I don't want to. Give me another one. It won't make a difference anyway. Nobody cares. Nobody listens. I'll see another one. I've yeah, been there, done that. I don't feel like it. I'll do it tomorrow. Good one. What else? Why does this matter? Put up a few more. You guys have named I'm too tired. I don't care that much anyway. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. That's a classic. I've never been good at this. <coughs> I tried and it didn't. I tried once and it didn't work. Yeah. It can wait. Yep. Who cares? I don't have time. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it really looks like in your mind, friends. Okay. <laughs> You, you went to overwhelm. Wait, we have two people with their hands up. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm tied up, yes. Too good to be true, yes. Is that it? You guys good? Okay. Yeah, so, and feel the energy in the room right now. It's like, ill, <laughs> right? So, in the early days when I was first learning about spirituality, I started hearing about the ego, and I remember when it was brand new, and just last week I read something again. It was the same language I read, you know, like, I don't know, 25 years ago when I was first learning about unity. And it said, ego stands for edging God out. I know that I don't want to sound cheesy, but it is. And, and as I look up there, these statements are not of God. These are ego statements, aren't they? Yeah, so this is us getting in our own way. And again, we never want to shame ourselves. We just want to go, oh, well, there I am being human again. And the truth is, we are scared of our own light. We are scared of our own light. That's the next slide. It says we are scared of our own light. We are scared of our own light because it has not been fully supported in the world. This is because, okay, this is important. We are waiting for someone else to support us, and it has to come from the inside. We still are expecting someone else to complete us. A parent that didn't support us, and we think then our, our spouse is going to do it. Or our church is going to do it. Or our chaplain is going to do it. Or our work is going to do it. It's up to us. 
I know because there are grown-ups sitting in this room. We're no longer children. And it's hard to grow out of this childlike, will somebody please support me? We support ourselves and call the right support to us. This is an advanced spiritual idea. Right? So otherwise, we're still, you know, like that old song, looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what we do. Truth is, our whole culture is love addicted. That's another, that's another day. We are all scared of our light. And I want to um, also bring you a, a quote today. I haven't used, I think I've used this once in my ministry, and it's one we've all read. It's from A Return to Love in Marianne Williamson. And I want to do that right now. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So we don't want to stay in this self-sabotage. We want to move out of that. We want to live from our vision, our dreams, and our goals. Because then it's not, we're not just living for ourselves anymore. See, it looks on the surface like, oh, well, this is all about you. Yes and no. You are not an island. Anything you do affects the collective. Right? So your dreams, goals, and practices are not just for you. They are serving others, and the world at large. Every time you choose goodness, every time you choose your light, every time you choose your Christ presence, everyone benefits. Everyone. Say to the person next to you, choose your light. One of the key practices we're doing together and one of the key practices I use I actually learned from my voice teacher who's an opera singer and uh, although it is uh, a wonderful breathing technique um, used in Tibetan Buddhism called pranayama um, I mean the you know the boring English way to say that is reverse nostril breathing pranayama just sounds cooler you know I wish I had like a cool robe or something to wear when I said it but I'm going to give you a moment to, to write this down. See where it says write down? I will take deep breaths every day as a way to support my dreams and goals. Go ahead and feel free to write that down now. I will take deep breaths every day as a way to support my dreams and goals. We're going to do it in just a second. Because there, there are some benefits. I don't want you to be aware of what they are, but first write it down in your own handwriting. Yes, you can take a picture of the slide. Must use device. It's been 45 minutes. <laughs> That's right. You're scared. You, you can't look down. Okay. Let's look at the next slide, please. I, I wanted to give you, like, sometimes, sometimes our brain needs something to deal with. Like, okay, why should I do this? Will you take deep breaths each morning and throughout the day is another key to moving forward and sticking to the work. Okay, so in other words, it helps me. I'm not just making up stuff for you to do. It grounds you to the here and now and puts you in contact with your soul. Now, how is this true? Well, I had a mentor many years ago uh, whose name was Mary Delaney. She's come here a few times. And she really helped me understand that any of us that grow up in dysfunction, which... Uh, did anybody in here grow up in a functional household? <laughs> okay. Uh, there's one. Bless you. <laughs> you. You just haven't gone to that first appointment yet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Anyway, what Mary taught me about the breath was really critical in my growth. Well, I had three people over time teach me about the breath, and the first one was a therapist years, about 30 years ago. And I remember I was in her office, and she said, you're not breathing. I said, how is that possible? And she said, no, the whole time you've been here, you haven't taken a breath. And I, she said, why, why do you think that is? You know, and I said, and she said, well, do you want to try it now? I still was not breathing. Do you want to try it now, she said. And I said, <laughs> that's it, okay. And then you know what happened? Tears. Oh, tears, 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 tears came. She said, the breath is the way through. Don't forget to breathe. So that was the first one. Don't forget to breathe. Then I started working with Mary, and she said, you know, I've noticed in my clients that a lot of people who grew up in dysfunction, they, they grew up kind of wondering, when was the other shoe going to drop and felt like they were walking on eggshells, you know, and trying to figure out when to do the right thing to make the fewest people mad, you know. And this causes us to do fear breathing, which lives here up in the chest. It's like when somebody pulls out uh, in front of us in traffic, what do we do? We say, <gasps> a lot of us breathe, you know, right there. And so the deeper breathing that moves us down, uh, down even past the diaphragm, really, that moves us down. I've learned to do now with my vocal coach, who's an opera singer in New York City. She's been here a couple times, too. And I know a few people here have taken one-on-one and classes with her, but it connects you, like, it connects you, not like, it connects you to the earth itself and connects you to your soul. And the type of breathing that we're doing, the reverse nostril breathing, is a balancing of the masculine-feminine energies. So it's a very both high spiritual teaching, but also a deep grounded feeling and awareness. You know, a lot of spiritual teachings will have you like, oh yeah, all's well, but like how does it work in the world? And this technique, I like it because it's just a tool, but it helps ground me so that I can really live and like move forward in my dreams really well from a real grounded place, not willy-nilly, but just, you know, and in um, like today, I've probably done this technique uh, for about 20 minutes probably it's really really supported me so it also I mean this is is such a wonderful thing it just calms calms the nerves and quiets the mind it's hard to stay in the mind especially when you're doing the reverse thing because it gives your mind a little something to focus on and then it's like spirit takes over and this long circular breathing uh, takes over and grounds you um, when uh, we're going to do it in a moment too in our time of meditation I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till there because I, I, there's just one or two more, more things I also want to mention if for some reason this type of breathing is not working for you maybe you've had sinus problems or whatever difficulty breathing don't worry about it visualize it the power of visualization is tremendous it can have the same impact your mind doesn't know the difference right and the visualization is a really important part of what we're doing too um, all month Lastly, and I wanted to give this um, to you because you're, you're so worth this, commitment to the practice. Even if you write down what you're going to do, if you don't do it on a regular basis, it will not have an impact in your life. You know, I remember when I was new in recovery, somebody said, if you treat, if you just drop into the meetings, it will be a drop in your life. It will not have lasting impact. So all these practices we're talking about is so, are they are so important to commit to, right? To commit to the practices, whatever they might be. And it may be new for you to even think about this for yourself, right? You may be so busy working or giving your, uh, all of your energy away that you don't know. So this is about just realigning yourself with the here and now moment, what's mine to do, and then committing to that practice. I really want to encourage you to do this. And the very last slide, which I really, you already know, Stick to it no matter what. You are worth the effort. Say to the person next to you, you are worth the effort. You are worth the effort. Now, remember all those reasons? Remember at the beginning of the talk, and we talked about things, I can't do it, and I don't know, and whatever. I'm going to tell you, as soon as you set a, a, a clear, clean intention, you know what's going to happen? The opposite of what you want to manifest. Be careful if you say, I want to manifest unconditional love. Woo! (laughs) Spirit's going to send you a doozy. It's not a test, though, from the universe. 
This is your own soul choosing. When you commit to your practice every single day, whatever it might be, your prayers, your meditation, your exercise, and you, you know, not doing them all in one day, I'm sure, but whatever those things are, every day you commit to them, you're saying to the universe, this is who I am now. This is the consciousness I live from. This is how I want to walk through the world. I take care of myself. I get enough sleep, and I take care of my body so that I can do your work. That sends a clear message to the universe. So when something comes up, your kid gets sick, something happens at the job, and you got to work overtime, you figure it out. You might have to walk on the lunch break and eat at your desk because you know when you walk a few minutes, your stress level goes way down. You're going to have to figure it out. Or you have a sick kid, and you say, Honey, I know we've been doing less computer time. For 15 minutes, enjoy. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go take care of myself, and I'm going to go outside, and I will be right back. And then we'll do something together. I'll read to you, whatever. But I'm going to take care of myself so that then when I come back, I'm a parent somebody would want to be around. Okay? So we want to commit to the practice because we are worth the effort. And there will be times. Life is going to happen, and you're going to have to figure it out. Get creative with how you're going to bring these practices forward. I promise you, you'll be happy you did. And believe me, everyone around you will be happy you did. <laughs> so on the breathing, I want to give you a couple of uh, instructions. Men, when we start this breathing, you are going to start with the exhale on the right side. So you have to hold your left nostril down. <laughs> you know, I'm so dyslexic. Help me. Okay. All right. Yeah. So then how you do it, I'm talking to the men first. Okay. You breathe out first, like for eight, or maybe six, like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you hold for a second. Then you inhale, three, four, five, six, you hold, and then out, one, two, three, four, five, six, in, hold, out, okay? Between each inhale and exhale, you stop and you hold for a second. Women, it's just the opposite. You start, and we were <laughs> joking about this at class, that usually you do the first one kind of strong, and you, <laughs> and you imagine clearing out the negativity, but sometimes it can get a little messy this time of year. <laughs> so just you can try that one at home. You know what I mean? You don't need to real strong here. I... People clean the pews, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so for women, you hold your finger over your right nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you hold empty for a moment. Then breathe in. Hold. Switch your finger to your left nostril. Breathe out of your right. One, two, three. So we're going to do this in total silence, men beginning with exhaling out of the right, women beginning exhaling out of the left. And we're going to do this in silence. If you have to clear your throat or whatever, don't worry. Every sound takes me deeper. At your own pace, hold and then... In again. Remember, if it's not comfortable for you, just sit and breathe and visualize. It's okay. Notice how you focus that the mind begins to clear.
When you feel more balanced, just breathe deeply, focusing on your breath. Take time to give a moment of silent gratitude for all the spiritual support you are receiving, even in this very moment. Now into this space of connection and oneness. I invite you to speak any name aloud of someone in your life in need of healing or prayer. Realize we hold this prayer with you that we see God's highest and best in the soul's life. As you speak the name, nothing but the highest is held for the soul. Brendan. Mom. Cece. Diane. Again, giving thanks that always we are supported by the universe. We are grateful, God, that always. When we turn within, when we do the work from the inside, we know that your presence, your power is always there, always supporting us, always lifting us. Our prayer is to become conscious, to commit to the practices that support us in living our biggest, grandest dream into the world. So thank you for all the teachers along the way, for all the spiritual support we have received, for all the lessons up to this very moment. Thank you for the people sitting to our left and to our right in front of us and behind us, realizing every soul is a blessing on the journey. For this time of prayer, of contemplation, and remembering the tr truth, we are grateful and we are blessed. Together we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.